exclusive control can charge for access and sell ads, while free public projects get little or no funding. To solve this dilemma, we need widespread, ongoing cooperation. So we developed crowd matching, where patrons coordinate by making their monthly donations based on everyone matching each other. If a project has few patrons, each donates very little, but they've all pledged to give more for each additional patron who will come help. Of course, you can set a budget limit beyond which the system will check with you and won't keep you in the crowd if you don't want to continue. If enough of us work together, we can clear the path to a free and open future. Join in at snowdrift.coop. Right, so, the, the core issue that we're talking about here is public goods. And what makes something a public good is you have two qualities, which is you have rivalrous goods. That's like, if you take this marker away, I can't use it anymore. And <laughs> You could have non-rivalrous, which means if you watched that video or we were watching it in this room, somebody else could have been watching it, then there's no, it doesn't stop that, us from watching it. There's yeah, anybody can share it all at once. Mm -hmm. And you can have exclusive or excludable, and you can have non-exclusive, and specifically when you have both. So exclusive is what you do when you have something everybody could share, like a road, but you put tolls or whatever other things on it so that you can <coughs> control how people use it in order to, in this case, compel people to fund it or get advertisers to pay you for the ad, get so, people's attention. And so public goods don't have those mechanisms to get funded. They are this stuff. So public goods don't have the ability to get money the way the other stuff is getting money. That's the problem. Yeah, so, so specifically there, uh, what Aaron's kind of going over is that uh, the non-excludable and non-rivalrous, those are your public goods. But you could have something, theoretically, that's rivalrous and then non-excludable, right? Yeah. So road actually could be considered that, maybe. So if we're going to be technical about it, rivalrous and non-exclusive, so this combination would be it's called common pool resources. Yes. And so that's like if you have fish in the ocean where you can use them up and so you eat that fish, it's not there for somebody else, but you can't choose who gets access to it. And so those have their own issues. To make a road, as our metaphor, be a true public good, it'd be like a bike path where each bicyclist doesn't really take up so much of the road, so it doesn't block, block anybody else. And the, each bike ride takes no wear and tear on the road, but you still gotta like clear the snow and you still gotta maintain the road or else be, we don't all get to use it. So these terms themselves come from economics. Um, and so they are you know, well, well thought out through and decide, um, agreed upon. Uh, the other big thing that uh, often comes up in these discussions is club goods. And club goods is this idea of if, if it's non-rivalrous, but it's artificially excluded. Um, so DRM is what creates club goods, for instance. Uh, one of the big things that we've focused on, um, yeah, one of my like quick lines, if I don't have enough time to really explain and go into what Snowdrift is, I'm like, Snowdrift takes the best of Kickstarter and Patreon. Well, Patreon creates club goods. That's really... Not, not all. Not, not all, but, but that's one of the, the big disadvantages, is it says you can't get access to this unless you get to this level, or vice versa, we want you to get to this level so you get access to this. Um, right. And that inherently has some problems. Yeah, so we, we were basically asking, or in general we could discuss the question of how in the heck, maybe we could open this at this point for, if anybody has any thoughts or questions or something, I just wanted this to be sort of a discussion. How could you, how does something that doesn't have any way to compel you to contribute, in other words, you get the results whether you pay or not, how is it that you get funded at all? Yeah. You know, obviously, some of this stuff exists because there are some public goods in the world. Uh, appeal to the community or culture? Yeah, you can just sort of shame people for not contributing. Well, you know, shame the free riders or something. Shame or... Or, or, or honor yeah. and great thanks to yeah, the praise um, to those who contribute. So one of the big issues with that, that... Uh, if you've, if you've kind of dealt in this space before, is, is that you really have no reliable funding source. 
what happens when your funders can't make it that month? They're like, well, does that mean you lose rent because you were reliant on the... the this, is, this creates that ongoing system um, where you do understand that you pro like yes, you might lose some funders, ooh, gain some funders, but yeah, generally so you know how much money is going to be coming so in. So that's where like even public radio or something makes a big focus on right. sustaining memberships because that reliability makes a big difference in their ability to, you know, if somebody's going to quit their day job to work on something, they need to know that it's not this one-off thing and then they're going to have to be out looking for work. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, so Wikipedia, for instance, does the big fund drive. And the only reason they're able to successfully fund themselves through that is that they have billions of eyes. Like, I mean, yeah, so a tiny fraction of that little right. bit of turnover, the people who are donating, is still a huge amount of people. But for the individual free software project, that's yeah, not necessarily so the case. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I have a very basic question. It's fine. I'm sorry. Hmm. So here I am. And what is the incentive for me to go to Snowdrift as opposed to some other thing that hmm. I might think this particular project is worth it, and I should send my check? Yeah, so yeah. The, the core point is that we want people to think systematically a little bit more. It's in your interest, at some level, if you like the idea, like if it makes you feel good to donate your $5 or your $10 or whatever, um, yeah, that's fine. But for everybody else thinking about the system, they are saying like, well, there's this many people donating. It doesn't feel like their $10 is gonna do a lot. So it really is only to the point where you feel like, you know, the honor or, or shame or something, like you feel like you weren't a free rider or you did your part. Why would you donate that versus fifty dollars? How do you decide how much to donate? So there, there's a couple. Of I don't know. The thing so, so, so part, part is based on you know basically just what my financial situation is and what I think uh, you know that. that, that uh, I mean, are you actually in a situation so, so where you can't uh, choose to donate? So, so I'm, I'm trying to a little more. I'm trying to understand the mechanics yeah. of mm -hmm. why the snowdrift machinery is more appealing to me compared to any other. So machinery. just to just to get to the core of like what Snowdrift Co op is doing, because this is one solution that we're proposing. Essentially, the there exists the idea of just asking people to be sustaining members. There exists the idea of appealing to people's just goodwill. You should be contributing to support this, or shaming people for free riding or whatever. Those things exist, and they take us as far as we see right now. And they don't compete. They don't get anywhere near the level of funding that you get when you have paywalls or that ad funding gets. And so at some level it's a relative thing in that if the proprietary thing is that much better, the free public goods are, you know, if, if the road is totally clear with somebody who just pays the toll and uses it, they're not gonna put up with the like crappy kind of cracked and snowdrift covered road, even if it's kind of usable, and they're not gonna go donate to that because they're just gonna go use the, the road that's already clear. So there, there's a, a market issue here, and we need to get more of the people who are continuing to fund funnel money into the proprietary stuff to fund a road that we can all share and keep it in good quality. And so what we're saying is it's, it's a critical mass. And the mechanism is you say, I could just donate $10, but I'm going to say, I will donate a little bit for every one of you who will donate with me. That's so the, that's so the, the reason that you would use this versus just donating is you're actually making a visible showing of support for a project. And the idea is that Sure, you could have a little sidebar in your project that has, we just got this donation from this person, thank you. We got this donation from this, thank you. This is saying, we have 5,000 people who believe that this project should continue to exist month to month. And that's not currently something that so we... That's different from a regular no, subscription. I, I, that, that's, but, that's not different from a regular subscription. I, uh, sorry, the, no, but... but the, the core point is that the message that somebody else would be seeing, what you're doing is inviting <laughs> other people. What you're saying is, other person who's not currently a, a patron I will chip in more if you join. Right. You're telling everybody else that you want to do more and you want them to help. So, so you're inviting other people to join in. You're assigning me up not as a donor, but as a um, offers matching gift yes. subscription. Correct. Yes. So the, the, the core, absolutely. So the core point is like in public radio, they have two primary mechanisms that are the most successful fundraising mechanisms uh, when it comes to this volunteer thing. Everybody gets to listen to the radio. So in a sense, that's a public good. Uh, it would be a full public good if they licensed it freely so that you could adapt it and translate it and whatever else instead of, you know, because that's a separate thing. Or you could strip away the ads and then share the <laughs> program with somebody without the ads. But um, 
aside from that, still the economics are pretty similar. They have matching grants. So you have some big philanthropist or company that says, here's this big pool of money, and you can will donate more of it if the rest of the people will donate more. So it's this matching thing. And then the other one is the sustaining thing, because that gives them a reliable income. Now, what we're doing is just combining those two. It's a, it's a new synthesis, because we're saying instead of a big philanthropist giving a matching grant, it's every individual donor saying together, we as a group of donors are going to match the donation of whoever else will come join us. The more people who will help, the more we are all willing to do. So we're offering that matching and the sustaining pledge. So it is a sustaining membership, and it's a matching grant. Then the, the next logical question is, so you have a, basically you have a thesis that by combining existing models mm -hmm. and massaging them in a particular well, this, way. Well, this right? specific one, yes. Yeah. Right, right, and there is a dynamic that you otherwise don't get. So the next logical question would be, so what, what numbers do you have to back that up that that thesis is the main thesis? Um, so we, we don't know for sure that this is, I mean, we're, what we're doing is we have a model that we've done the best research we can with the extremely limited funding we have. So we're right. funded as a, yeah, what, one thing to, that is kind of really different from this to any other crowdfunding type uh, organization, and uh, this, Aaron's done a bunch of research on this, um, and this page is, is very visible, but it, it talks about some of how these different, oh, this is the wrong one, isn't well, it? Wrong one, other crowd uh, the, the Part of the answer is that we did the best research we could with the limited resources, so we looked at all the 700 other <coughs> existing platforms and how they work, and that's part of what we could discuss, even like what does or doesn't work, and what you know, or, or questions you have about the status quo. Um, but that? from the research that is done by institutions that study how people fundraise, whatever, um, you can think of it a little bit like a walkathon, that sort of thing, where people feel the social reinforcement that other people are willing to show that they're willing to do extra if I do my part. Um, so it's, it's built on a lot of good ideas, but it is, fair to say that what we're saying is we have a hypothesis that if people are willing to understand that they are not taking any risk if nobody joins them, they're not going to even donate your $5, you're withholding your potential donation as an invitation to say, I will donate more when more people join me, that a greater number of people, so potentially a lot more people than those who are currently just saying, look, here's my $10, are willing to say, okay, I'm willing to just sign up and say, yes, I support this, you know, I'll give pennies or something, but if other people really support me, you know, we're giving $25,000, but we have 5,000 people and my $5 is part of that, you know, that sounds great, I'm, I'm in. Uh, we believe that could reach a much wider audience. And it's, uh, yeah, it would take a lot of research to try to validate that more than build a system that can support it and mm -hmm. uh, adapt. So, I think particularly we think that there are a lot of people out there who aren't donating because they don't really feel like it's going to make a difference, mm -hmm. right? They, they feel yeah. like, like, like if you hear an NPR pledge drive, you feel like, well, it would be a good thing to do in principle, but whether I do or I don't, you don't see any real difference in how the future pans out. Mm -hmm. It's just whether you kind of feel like you kind of did what you're supposed to do or not, but you really feel like how, how, how well funded NPR is going to be just depends on the average of what other people do, which is going to be more or less the same whether I do it or not. Whereas in this case, you feel like you're, if you understand it, you feel like by pledging, I'm not just adding a drop to the bucket, I'm helping to actually create, have a lot of other drops, attract a lot of other drops to the bucket. Mm -hmm. the, the way I think about it, if there was a particular project that had a particular milestone that required a particular amount of money, mm -hmm. then that model makes some sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. Let's that would say we need $10,000 in order to accomplish something, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to provide $10,000 on my own, so if I provide them you know, with $100, then what happens to my money, uh, assuming nobody else donates? Right, but well, that's Kickstarter. That's that, exactly that is Kickstarter. Kickstarter. So yeah. that model is the threshold model, and it's similar because the threshold says, uh, I'm not going to take the risk of donating unless together we hit this goal. That is true, true but they all have, uh, so, so what you haven't uh, at least said so far of what I've heard yeah. is that it would be tied to a particular milestone of the project. Yeah, so we're not that would that. be the thing that would make it a so difference in my <coughs> because now I understand well, so, why so it that's, matters. So, so yeah, the, that's a mechanism that exists. That's so the, the, the thing about uh, the milestone is in, in, in this case, what we're doing is you're supporting a project. 
And the project can keep having milestones, and it can keep making progress. It can keep asking for different things, but the idea is that you're supporting this project in what they're doing. You're becoming a patron of the project. And they could, the project could certainly say, like, if we can get our monthly income up to this, we will hire a full-time developer to work on this that we currently can't, and so bugs will get fixed much quicker and things like that. And they, they could certainly say that, but there's nothing about this notion of mechanism that forces them mm -hmm. to choose a particular so threshold. In, in practice, I, mean, I think it helps to be concrete. I don't, I have seen every single Kickstarter type campaign, every professional campaign that I'm aware of, has felt relatively arbitrary to me in the sense that there's a lot of guesswork. It's kind of like coming up with a budget for a massive project, especially when it's something that's not exactly the same as, you know, it costs this much to manufacture how many widgets. But especially something new or innovative, something creative, it's very, very hard to estimate how much exact budget it's gonna take to whatever and how much expenses there's gonna be and where you'll get to this and that in three months. And uh, you know, what could I have said about Snowdrift in terms of how much expense or how much time it would have taken us to get to wherever. There's, there's so many factors. And when you have a threshold, what you do is you decide, well, if I set it really low, then it's more likely that it will succeed. But once the threshold happens, you don't get the, the matching mechanism anymore. So I'm, I'm trying, to, trying, to, uh, mm -hmm. just trying to explore what in my own mind caused me to think in which particular way. So right. let me, so maybe maybe one let me see if this is one particular thing that will see if it jogs your intuition. So the way we're thinking of it, the, con the project I'm imagining, we made some of the, the video stuff or the other things in um, specific projects that already exist. You know, we're using free software. Uh, Inkscape we use to make these animations, these uh, you know, illustrations or something, and it's, it exists. It doesn't have a, mm. we can do Inkscape if we get to X, or we can hire a developer at blah. We literally have a situation where people are volunteering their time or working underpaid and are basically minimizing their losses and trying to see if they can sustain and hope not to go under. And I want the project to continue and expand and grow, and there is no level where I can say concretely, Inkscape will be good when they get this level and they won't, it, less than that is worthless and more than that is, you know, it's more like the more money Inkscape gets, the better it will get as long as month to month it's using it well. And if, if six months go by and I think they're abusing, they're not doing well, I pull my pledge. Um, Do, does, does that jog your intuition though to think about an existing project that's already going and it's a question of... I, I think it boils down to, I think the state that you're, if I understand this correctly, the state that you're at with the sort of project is that you have a have a hypothesis, but you don't have a whole lot of data from a few hundred projects that have adopted that. Is that you're, you're absolutely yes. correct. In, in which case, I think the logical question would be, what are your next steps to get that data? So, yes, so let, let's go uh, quickly into that, and then I do want to open up um, to a couple of our uh, veins here. Uh, our next steps, and where we are right now, like I said, we've been working on getting this to a point where we can actually launch. Um, a couple things that may not have been mentioned in the video or in something that's been popped up yet is that we fund ourselves as a project on the site. We don't, we're not like taking a percentage from any of these that type of thing. Um, our next step is we're going to partner with a few all, like already successful projects that are, could be more successful. They, they are funded, but they need more funding or they need more sustainable funding. We're going to work closely with them, make sure they, we know their needs, and get them on there, and then we'll see how it works for these types of projects. We'll open it up more and more to more th this level of project, and eventually we'd like to be able to open it up to you know, submissions from the same one, including projects that are just starting off. This, this platform is not necessarily the most optimized for building your initial community. This is definitely focusing on that long-term ongoing maintenance yeah. of a project. Let me give you one very concrete short story. This started when I was using a program called Task Coach, which is still struggling, and I was personally realizing that this was superior in certain feature sets to all of the proprietary stuff out there, and yet also much more buggy and kind of screwy, and had the you know, standard open source sort of project situation. And I had contacted the developers and said, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing. Could I, what should I donate? What should I do, et cetera? And, realized after talking with them, they got back to me, which at the time I was new to all this world, surprising to me that they took the time to, to talk to me. And there's a level of, why are you talking to me? Like, go fix my bug instead yeah. of talking to me. But uh, they're just people in their spare time kind of struggling to make this project work. Mm -hmm. And I realized there's tens of thousands of people who are just like me, 
And we all collectively, if we all just donate in a bit, you know, like we could hire somebody and all of us, it would all work. But there's this coordination problem. And that's where the Snowdrift Dilemma as a game theory thing comes in, because it mm -hmm. basically says, I could decide that I'm going to pick up shovel and start shoveling, but is that really going to do anything? And it's a lot of cost to me. And if everybody else is sort of just waiting for me to do it, which is what most of us are doing, like there are those couple people who are working on it, and they're like hoping that they'll fix the bugs mm -hmm. instead of picking up things and everybody helping. And that's the, the standard thing, because everybody is worried that they're going to be just like those people. Those people who are burning out, trying to be the, the few people shoveling, and they're like, I, they look at that and go, I, I don't want to just go join them and then start burning out. They won't, so they just sit on the sidelines. But I, all of us did a little bit. It would work, and so I said to them, could I, do we do some big campaign or something where I just tell everybody else, like, I'll chip in a little bit if you all chip in a little bit. And they said, that's an interesting idea. There's no way to coordinate that exactly, and it led into Building the research that became Soldier Fight Co-op. Yeah. Do you have projects that are kind of on your list and, and yeah. ready to launch with you, but maybe well, you want to reveal them just yet? Or? Yeah, uh, we we actually do. We're we're collecting some uh, here at this event, but we've also been uh, in talks at different events over different conferences. Um, I'd say our most exciting one is Cody. Uh, they are they've been looking at funding problems for a long time, and uh, we have some personal contacts with them. But uh, for instance, just at this conference today, we spoke with the uh, founder of RPG Game Maker, and it seemed very interested. Really, one of the, the things that we want, we want projects that are very free, very open, uh, in, in like all of the senses, but also we want things that are consumer facing. This isn't the best platform for libraries. Maybe at some point some of those could be used this, but this is really those consumer-focused projects that have um, that ha are ongoing development. Probably have a couple of people. They're not a big company, uh, and we have a list of a, of a number of them. I, I do mention Inkscape a lot. I'm in touch with those yep. people. Um, the state of so the state of Snowdrift that up specifically, although we want to sort of talk about the concept generally. I really appreciate questions like yours about the, the nature of how we think about funding and how we think about the economics <coughs> of it as a community and as a society. But um, specific to our case where we are, some of us have gone and done the thing where we're the bur people burning out, shoveling the stuff <coughs> because the thing needs to exist and like you have to start somewhere. Uh, we have a lot of, like a roadmap pretty clear. We have a community and a, and a lot of interest, but we have some legal challenges and some organizational challenges and like whether somebody's actually doing all of the work to actually be emailing back and forth and talking with the, the project. So uh, in the case of Inkscape, as just an example, uh, I know that the, their fiscal sponsor, which is the um, uh, so, uh, Software Freedom Conservancy, is you know familiar, friends with all those people and they're very supportive of like what we're doing and are happy to sign up projects, you know, as long as projects are on board and, the Inkscape people are sort of like that, yet everybody, it's like a chicken and egg thing. They're kind of waiting for, are we going to have all of our boxes checked? Because obviously, when you're dealing with money, it has to be, all the legal concerns have to be clear. We're using Stripe as a payment processing and whatever else, but we have to know that every bit of our code is totally solid. Nothing, Nothing's wonky with people making pledges and money and processing. So we are pretty close in that way, but it's, yeah, there's a bunch of steps up to where we can say, okay, let's do it. And, and I will um, say, uh, right now, um, basically at the last Linux Fest, and one of the, or at Siegel, one of the things we uh, have and what we're hoping to even do today, or here this weekend, I'm not sure uh, how close we are, but uh, basically we're able to take pledges for the Snowdrop yeah, project. Yeah, so we're the first project, and we so, are live now. So we're live, we are capable of that. Um, the way pledges work though, and why it's not really meaningful until we get some of those projects on board is if you have 100 people, it's a penny a person. No, it's 10 cents. 10 cents for 100? Yeah. You're right, 10 for 100. Uh, so 10 cents. Point is 10 cents, Stripe processing right, fees. We, can't, we, can't process we cannot that. actually take your money for like five years. <laughs> um, but once it's 1,000 people, you know, yeah. once it's 10, like, like it grows, and until we get these big projects on board, well, it, we'll see. It, it, but 
As we get the word out, but yes. As we, we get the word out, but the, the we're point- We're not gonna actually process any charges until it's not gonna get eaten up by fees. I, exactly. So we're, we're doing the charging and arrears thing. There's like, you know, legal issues in other ways. We talked about initially the idea that you could like, a wallet. put a wallet, yeah. like you say, like here's my $10 to play with in the system. But holding people's money is like, okay, now we're into a weird legal. So instead, mm -hmm. instead it's just like you make your pledge and you make your pledge having signed up with Stripe. So it's, we know you're not just some, you know, you're not faking it like we actually have your, you, you put in your credit card information with Stripe, but, um, but it's just adding up month to month until yeah. it gets to a point where it's like we could charge it and it's not just eaten up by fees. So that, that's a little into the weeds on that. So yeah. Um, have you thought about doing this with smart contracts that would just enforce like a mm -hmm. like a blockchain sort of thing? Yeah. Um, the the short of it is, uh, we don't as a project happen to be like super into that space and we're not <coughs> totally close to it, you know, in principle. But uh, it's, it's we're definitely not it's definitely been point. discussed a little. Um, where we are is uh, as has kind of been brought up. Uh, this is hypothetical right now, and. Uh, we've, when I when I came on board, there were a lot of complicated things going on uh, where the project was maintaining the largest Haskell project on the internet, um, and a variety of other things like that. We've tried to slice and dice until we can actually get something that we can launch and then iterate, and that uh, is one reason we're not even thinking about in anything beyond. In principle, crowd matching can be done with yeah. Yeah. the smart contracts, of, you know, yeah. but it's not the space that we're working at at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, in terms of testing the hypothesis, uh, I'd say a huge portion of our efforts have been even similar to what we're talking about right now, having this conversation. Uh, we're talking to people and getting feedback, and we're coming up with ways to present this idea, and it's about getting people to understand what it is you're engaging with, because when you're doing something that isn't exactly the same as the experience you've already had, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's only a you know, synthesis of things that you can tie into, uh, there is a matter of people just understanding what we're proposing. And some people, they just get it right away, and some mix of people, maybe it's half and half, go like, oh my god, you mean you could just charge me $500? Right. And then I say like, well, of course we're gonna have a, a budget cap where we won't charge you beyond like your budget limit that you set. And then there's other people where if I say, without them asking, oh, it'll be a budget cap, they're like, well, of course, why are you, why wouldn't you, why are you insulting my intelligence? Um, and, and I will mention that uh, so, yeah. beyond here, uh, one place that we do have a lot of these conversations um, is a uh, discourse forum that we rolled out, community.snowdrop.co-op. Yeah, so um, and ha questions like smart contracts would be a perfect thread that people could be talking about on there. Um, yeah, that would solve the transaction yeah. fee problem. You wouldn't have to have a legal entity. Uh, I'm not sure about the transaction fee. Uh, well, it's debatable, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, so I'm hearing there's a certain dimension to this. I'm sitting here, I just ended my credit card, I pledged. So according to your theory, all of you guys are now doing the same thing in the next five minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, so if you do, uh, what is, so we, we actually need to update, we have some designs actually, we need somebody to do, we have limited bandwidth for the people who are implementing the website. Uh, but it should say more clearly, like, uh, and this is the idea, there are, what's the number now? Your number what? Say what number? 106. 106. Yep. You're the 106th person. So it's at 10.6 cents uh, a month at this point. Uh, and it's like at the end of the month, it's a little register a like thing on your account, you know, adding up. Um, but each each of you, you like he'll donate another tenth of a cent for each of you, but so will 105 other people. So there's yeah. 106 people who are gonna put in another tenth of a cent if for each of you who will mm -hmm. who will donate. That's the idea. Why does it make sense if you have a cap in your donation? Why does it make sense to drop out rather than yeah. just Great question. That was one of my questions. No, uh, that's, uh, that's a fantastic question. Um, do, you wanna, do you want to? <laughs> sure. Uh, real briefly, it's, it's just that you wouldn't be matching at that point. If, you, mm -hmm. if we want to have this incentive, we can't honestly say all these people are going to match you if the answer is all these people are going to keep donating exactly what they are and not match you. Um, and so yeah, a different at, number. Well, we, we, there, the, the short of it is we had a more complicated idea about the multiple mechanisms of how it could all work, and we decided that it had to start at just the simplest version of it. Uh, probably the best illustration that we've discussed on the forum, actually, I like, but this is like the <laughs> internal discussions, was illustrating it as you're like a relay runner and you're handing off the baton. Mm -hmm. The only way it goes past your budget is because somebody else came in and you said, 
matching this many people is too much. Mm -hmm. And so you're basically saying, okay, new person, I'm out, you're in, and now the numbers didn't change. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're letting other people, but you still, it's a public good, so right. the whole point is when you leave, you're saying, I get to get all the results everybody's getting anyway, and I'm not even having to donate. And I mean, it's you great. Can to donate to some you can, project that has right. fewer uh, patrons. We could split it up, have sub projects. We could do something like, I'm only going to participate every other month. And uh, I mean, it's well, no, you could. We could, we could, we don't have that now. It's that, like a, a anyway. possible tweak you could do to maximize <clears throat> participation, even while you keep people in their budgets. And there's trade-offs. That that is definitely but, the case. But I, the I guess core the thing point is, is that you have to be. If you're saying you're matching everybody and everybody understands that. We can't have people saying, well, yes, but I'm actually just staying at my flat level. Right. Um, the, the thing to kind of really take away about what's going on there is you said that you would get the project to this level. Mm -hmm. It got there. You made it to that level. So you can let it grow or uh, maintain. And if it drops below, you can pick it back up. Okay. But that's the level you're getting it to. Mm -hmm. so the, the, core, the core idea, actually, uh, although there's a number of... <coughs> I mean, these are like internal discussions. Um, and, and everybody, since it's a big community project, there's not even a, you know, we're actually open to anybody's feedback and thoughts on any of this. The, 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 the proposal right now is that it's a system-wide budget because it's not a matter of making a free and advanced decision of, I think Inkscape deserves X, because as I was saying, that's a very hard decision to make. What we're saying is more literally, I'm not willing to put more than this amount of my personal budget into this system, and so we're, saying that's an absolute cap. The hope, in a like, sort of utopian way, would be that you say, wow, I'm at my budget limit, but holy moly, if there are 10,000 people donating to this, and we're like hiring teams of people, and like my free software vision for like a, a more ethical world that I want to live in is like going there, I'm on board, can you just go, okay, my, I'm gonna up my budget to $20 instead of $10 or whatever, because you say, my personal way of putting it is, yeah, I would donate my entire life savings if somehow that was part of making it that a billion people in the world were changing the economy in a way that would make a world I'd rather live in. How about a mechanism that, that, so you reach your budget, you drop out, and you get notified when you're back at, when it yeah. drops down to 90% mm -hmm. of your budget? Yeah, or, or we Definitely, we, we do, we have notifications enabled in. Uh, so that, that way you yeah. say, oh, well, they're hurting again, I can help them out. Yeah, yeah. or you could say, you could say, um, I'm at my budget for the system, and I'm deciding that that one that put me over the limit, I really, really care about that project, so I'd rather drop this other one that I don't care about as much. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot of different ways, you could, and you could see how you could make this useful thing. You could even do some social thing where you sort of say, I really want to see what my friend is supporting, and I want to support the same stuff they're supporting. There's a lot of, once you have a, a, fun, a functioning system, uh, one core thing is that we're running this as a cooperative. That's a decision mm -hmm. from the beginning. Snowdrift.coop is a sponsored top level domain. So it's a democratically run system. And even as we formalize the governance of it, uh, the community who are all patronizing all the projects, uh, it's supposed to be serving their interests. We're not actually trying to serve the interests of people who make projects. The point is that it should serve the public interest. Mm -hmm. And we want the people who are donating to have the say. And so if you're running as a co-op, we can mm -hmm. change all these policies and features and prioritize them based on what what people care about. Um, yeah, speaking of kind of getting the, the public's interest in mind, um, I used GraphPay back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, and that was my big complaint, both as a giver and a receiver. I had a little open source project mm -hmm. on there. The whole point of GraphPay is you don't know who's donating to you, so you can't even say thank you to them. Um, did you like that or didn't like that? <coughs> I didn't like that at all, like from either side. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. I think what I liked about GratiPay is that they were trying to go towards, um, not the, away from the, you know, sort of special rewards paywall model. Right. And, and so that element is good. One, of, We're definitely focusing on that. You know, I emphasize that the Patreon, for most projects, is a paywall service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I, you know, there are elements of GratiPay that were good. The main the main complaint I had about them, mm -hmm. besides that they kind of jumped into things without doing all their due diligence, mm -hmm. is that it wasn't a new model. It's just right. it's just the same thing as if I click your donate button on PayPal. Mm -hmm. And it works for those people who just want to say, look, I feel good giving you a donation. But it wasn't getting the critical mass that mm -hmm. I think we need. So I'm just wondering, 
probably fascinating that you uh, organize this as a co-op, but uh, if I just heard you correctly, then it is a single stakeholder co-op where the members we of the co-op are the donors yeah. rather than a multi-stakeholder. Uh, uh, so we actually started Great with question. Yeah. <laughs> we started with that. We actually contacted co-op uh, advisors when we first started, and then mm. they led us to the multi-stakeholder model, and we read a bunch of things, and then proposed, uh, wrote entire bylaws with the idea that it would be three stakeholder classes, the people who are employees of the platform, the people who are getting funded, and the people who are funding, and that we had a whole sophisticated way to work that out, and having discussed it more recently with other advisors and gone through the process of it, mm -hmm. um, we realized, A, that it was just that the complexity of running a multi-stakeholder was, we simply can't afford it. We don't have the mm -hmm. capacity to, to, to undertake all of that. But more, we got more in touch with our vision of it, which is to say, go back to my example of Task Coach, I wasn't actually starting this to try to empower that person who is the software developer. Uh, if they're getting funded, you know, great. In our world as is, the problem I personally at least see, and that we see as a mission for Snowdrift, is about the technology and the software and the, the journalism, whatever else, actually serving the public interest. So it really is a consumer co-op, it's about the putting it more on the demand side. Right now we have a supply side power where the supply side produces stuff and you get to choose from what they decide to offer you. Mm -hmm. And we're creating a situation in which we're wanting it to be the demand side gets to drive it more. The people can say, here's what we want, here's where our values are, and pay people to do it. All the work you did on the multi-stakeholder thing, does it do good so much? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, it's in a bylaws draft on a wiki thing. If you get in touch with me, I can send you the, the details. And we were working out a uh, a, a weighted score voting mm -hmm. approach to how different uh, groups would be elected and then make sure that it was an interesting model. Are, are your bylaws open source? Every, right? Everything we do is. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we and we. It's all of our work under Creative Commons yeah. Attribution Share Alike, so CC by SA uh, for the non code stuff, and otherwise it's AGPL code. Yeah, and we went even farther with that, which is to say we made various sacrifices by trying to follow Richard Stallman's requests to make everything that we were using in Teams that even our tool mm -hmm. be completely free. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's hard. It's kind of it's like... It, including our tools for when we like have weekly meetings, including not having a shared yeah, like calendar. Google Hangouts or whatever you know. else. <laughs> it, was, it was early on, like in the early beginnings of this project, this is several mm -hmm. years ago, but you know, we had somebody who said, oh, if you're gonna use Google Hangouts, that somebody suggested, like, I won't be there. I'm not gonna right. install that on my computer. Mm -hmm. And we made the decision that we didn't, we didn't want that voice excluded. We wanted the people who cared the most to be, to feel welcome. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we had that stuff on Gatorius, and then Gatorius went down, mm -hmm. and then that was uh, we, Long uh, stories. Uh, on, on that <laughs> last story, um, we had been uh, having a hosted version of GitLab but they are just discontinuing that. So as of like this week, we've uh, migrated to GitLab main. And part of that, again, is because we want to be on the more freedom respecting platform and we want to have it so anyone can come and contribute. Um, it's, it is the place where people are developing. So yeah, we, we definitely we, we try around GitHub, but we don't, we don't prioritize that. Yeah, we that. do mirror. mirror. Um, so gitlab.com is our main thing and it's like, yeah, so like if you go to site, you probably saw this. If, if, if any people go pledge, but when you go to the strike page, we have a we we made we did all the due diligence. We put up a warning and said this page has proprietary JavaScript because we talked to all the people. I have a thing in my backlogs, my emails about how um, the folks at CrowdSupply, which it does hardware focused fundraising, mm -hmm. um, but they are one of the very few places that bother making sure that they can work without any proprietary JavaScript, mm -hmm. and so. We could do all of the work of doing exactly what they did, which is not trivial, to make sure that we could run without even that. But for now, we're just like, okay, we use the Stripe JavaScript thing. Uh, so we just have a couple minutes left. Um, so but I want to make sure. Yeah, there's stuff about Snowdrift, and there's also. <coughs> yeah, I, I just want to make sure that uh, that if you've been thinking on something, sitting on it, because we've we've had a lot of voices over here and a couple Any other mostly up here. Questions or thoughts? <laughs> so currently, is it? Every project you agree to um, join, is it always the same? Each, this, each project has yeah. the one. At this point, it's a dollar per thousand, yes. you know, tenth of a cent per patron is our starting thing. We Our initial, initial early thing was to go with uh, a hundredth of a cent per 
patron with the ability to do like a double pledge or a triple pledge or whatever, and then a matching formula of how you would match extra pledges. And that was- but When I first <laughs> met Aaron, uh, it was here like four years ago, and it took me, I don't know, an hour and a half to understand what the concept was at all. No, you, I think you got the, the, the initial fit like pretty quickly, and then I had and to do the qualification of saying, well, it's not just that you pledge this because we have this other, and, yeah. and then it was like, uh, and yeah. eventually we just realized like, I, well, well, the, the okay. optimal math can't, is, is just not, yeah. to okay. make it something practical, it has to be something people can understand. If we're asking them to do point. something new, it's already. I'm just thinking that there's, but in certain, the future. Certain, certain projects which are yeah. never gonna be high volume right. projects, right. They, still have, they still have costs associated, and you can say, well, yeah. Totally. I, I, I really like this project here, and so I'm only I'd rather have, I'd rather, yeah. so this project could have, you know, be higher cost than your budget. So I think, we I definitely think have discussed some ways to deal with that in the future. But I think we're going to, we made the decision basically to, even though we're happy to discuss it on the forum and we can, you know, mm -hmm. there's open discussion about any of this, we're going to delay making any additional tweaks and options like that until we have more real world, it's not just type of hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Real projects are using it and it's happening and then we can say, okay, but we need to add this option for this project to have whatever. And that goes into the multi-stakeholder thing. We really want the projects to have mm -hmm. an input on all of these decisions. But that said, they have even more of a vested interest. They will be more active. If, some, if you're getting funded through this, um, you know, your voice is gonna get heard, I'm sure that's, they can, and, and anybody who's a member of the project can still be a member of the co-op as a patron themselves. Yeah, uh, so I wanna voice one thing that it didn't actually get set up here, at least I recall. And one of the really cool things mathematically about what's going on here is your donations are going up linearly, but the donations that the projects are receiving go up quadratically. Mm -hmm. And that mathematical model doesn't really exist elsewhere. That's one of the things that really drew me to this project when I first heard about it. But uh, that being said, we are out of time, so I want to be respectful of that. Uh, we have a booth downstairs. We're happy to talk more about this. Uh, yeah, thank you all on. for yep. being here. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, as a bonus 